Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to another Open TTD episode. Today, we're going to start looking at some of your viewer submissions for this series. Now, first up, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you very much for all of the people who have come to me and give me their game saves and also come onto the Discord channel and share their game saves there too. I've collected them all together and we're going to go through some in this episode and I will not be able to get a chance to go through them all but don't worry if I don't get a chance to look at yours for the 1940 save hopefully we'll be able to look at yours sometime soon. So I hope you're playing along if you're not already playing along please do go to the first episode in this playlist and um, check it out Feel free to get along, there's plenty of time for you to catch up with this series. This first one is submitted by Bill Bowen. Thank you very much, Bill. We're going to, first of all, we've obviously got some tracking stuff here. We're first of all going to go to the map of the world and just have a look, see what's going on. So if we have a look here, we can see that there's some stuff happening down in the leg of the country, uh, a bit around the Norfolk area. Um, to the um, east of London, I think that is, and then something around the top of the Humber. I think that's through the Yorkshire sort of area. So let's start up here. Coal Hub 2. Well, you've labelled them beautifully here. You can see that we've got some fantastic stations. It looks like you may have used the maximum station spread. Uh, let's have a look. What's that? 15? I don't think I set it to 15. Bill, did you change that? I don't know if you did or not. I have no idea. Um... We'll certainly check that out, but I think I think you are well within your rights to do so. Look at this magnificent train. We have three engines on the front. They're the Jubilees, and you've got so many wagons on the back there. You need long stations. You're not putting long stations in to get bigger catchment. You're putting long stations in to have some mega trains, and that is some long trains. In fact, let's look at your trains. How many trains have you got? 118 trains already you must really be raking in the money so if we have a look here you can see that there's quite a few long ones there some short ones let's just scroll down long short long short long short okay so you've got some long ones you've got lots of long ones and some short ones in there too and look at the money on some of these now some of these i think are pretty much brand new. we're at the beginning of the year so the profit this year is going to be terrible so if we look at profit last year, some of these trains haven't really paid off. But I'm guessing, look, they're all full. Well, most of these are full that haven't paid off yet. But if we sort it the other way around, ones that have paid off, oh my goodness, £237,000 profit last year for this train for... That's amazing. And we're going to go and over and have a look at that one soon. So... Long stations, long trains, amazing profits. Absolutely brilliant. I feel like I'm going to be taking a little of inspiration for you, or from you, sorry, Bill, in one of uh, my areas of the network. So um, we can see here that you're bringing things around. What's up here? Is it coal? It looks like you're doing coal around here. Yep, you're going a few coal mines there, coal mine, a couple of coal mines there. Picking it all up. You've got a power station here that you're dropping off at. You've got a hub here, so it looks like a lot of things get brought in, and then what's going on down here? You bring in the coal a long way, a very long way, to a power station over here. So it looks like that all the coal down at the south you're taking up, and a lot of the stuff at the south you're taking down. Now these station designs are absolutely fantastic. On busier routes, these are the station designs that I use. Um, I haven't used any in my Let's Play yet. But I will be using some um, in coming episodes as, as the network gets more complicated. So I, I like your station length. I like your your junctions going into the stations there. Also your depots. I've noticed you've got double depots, which is a good thing. And these double depots are forced. So there's no way for a train to go straight on. In fact, if we unpause the game, you'll see that this train has to go in that depot. Now, whether it will service or not, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. But let's find out. Let's find out. Let's go like this. So at the minute, its reliability is 73%, and it's still going into the um, depot. If we leave it to go in... Yep, there you are. It jumped up to 79%. One of the things I regularly get from people is, I can't play this game with breakdowns turned on. I'm going to say now, if you're going to change any of the settings, and you really want to turn breakdowns off, okay, turn the breakdowns off, 
it's going to make the game a little bit easier, but some people really don't like it. I do. I like the extra challenge. And I can see you've got these double depots regularly along your route. So this is how you're managing that reliability. I'm presuming you got them turned on, otherwise you wouldn't bother putting these depots in. Um, this one, ironically, is broken down on its way in. It's 75% reliability, so really, really, that was unlucky that that train broke down. But having the depots regularly is a good way of doing it. I, looking here, you've got depots going into a station. So you've got depots before you spread into the uh, before you go into the station. That's a good way of doing it. Uh, depots before junctions is also good too. So overall, I'm very impressed, Bill. Um, we're just going to have a look at a couple of other parts of your hub. So if we go to the back to the map of the world, we've all been up Yorkshire. If we go down south here, and I think this is some this is something that I noticed quite early on, but never did anything about. There are quite a few of iron ore mines around here. In fact, there's six iron ore mines you could probably get with one station. Bill's opted to put the station to one side and then spread station it. I mean, if you wanted to, you probably could have got through the middle here with that station. But we're going to say for logistics reasons, probably, Bill decided to put it to the side. And I don't blame him, really, to be honest. Um, again, long trains. This one here is just leaving. Um, so it's not made much profit this year, but, you know, nearly a quarter of a million pounds last year on that train. And of course, your network spreads right down to the tip, bottom tip of the country. Um, picking up, and it looks like it's something you're actively working on because there's a couple of stations down here not hooked up yet. Now, something that isn't hooked up, I don't think, in your build, in your Let's Play, is... Well, I've lost it. It's round here somewhere. Oh, Exeter. Oh, you have got it going. Okay, so you've gone, you've you've put some roads out. Um, you've got your bus stations round the centre, and Exeter's growing um, at a rate of every 12 days. Now, I'm just going to just also quickly hop over the other end of the country and check Norfolk, because here. Yep, here's the whole beach factory challenge, and you are doing 145 crates of goods. So either you've this is probably something you haven't pursued much, or you've only just started. But again, look at these. Look at these. These these are some of the best um, station um, junctions I think you can do. I'm not a hundred percent sure those signals are required because this is a terminus station. Ah, you've got a depot on the end. Okay, so I think if you put a depot on the other end of a station. These signals are then required. I can't remember off the top of my head because I don't normally do that myself. But overall, Bill, you've got nearly a million in the bank. You've got a fantastic network. Uh, I'm really impressed. Well done so far. Your company value is at 9 million. I'm looking forward to seeing where your network goes in the future. Next up, we have Patrick Kumar. And I can see here that uh, you're in the May of 1940, so the the, uh, the year is pretty much right. The bank balance is looking, looking pretty pretty here. you got just over $2 million in the bank account. So financially, you're doing really well as well. You've got some stuff going on in Lincolnshire, so let's have a look at that first of all. Oh, you've got Lincoln North. So at Lincoln North, you've, you've got your sawmill in there, it looks like. Are you just dealing in wood, or has you just got a bit of all sorts going on? So you've got... Metheringham Woods and Saxelby Woods. Yeah, you're concentrated on your wood, which is which is really good thing to do. Your station length looks quite short to me. Yeah, station length four, which is you know it's, it's perfectly adequate in this stage of the game. And you are bringing, I think you're bringing the goods straight up to Scunthorpe. Yeah, it looks like they're coming in at the bottom of Lincoln North, and you've actually got a spread station there uh, to come out the out of Lincoln North and your trains look are your trains too small for the station length three platforms and that train there looks like a length four train to me or a three and a half so if I'm right and I could be wrong you might have some loading issues with those trains but you're bringing them up to Scunthorpe um, yeah look some of the trains are shorter than the other Nice simple junction, nothing wrong with that, that junction will work. Um, you'll probably get a little bit clogged up in the future if you send a lot of trains there, but certainly at the moment, you're doing uh, that's not, not a problem at all. Um, you've got some iron ore going on, I'm not 100% sure where you're taking it, because you've got some trucks. Where, where's, you've got loads of iron ore here. 
and I can't see that you're taking it anywhere. Oh, I see. Right, so, you've been really clever here. Your train station covers this steel mill, and you've got yourself a truck stop in the centre of town, which is spread stationed with the train station, allowing you to drop your goods off in the centre of town, getting into this steel mill, which will create steel. I don't know if you're taking the steel out. Let's have a look. You are taking it out by train. Cool. So, looking pretty good round there. Let's have a look at your operating profit. So, you are currently just hitting the uh, half a million in the operating profit. And your company value is just coming up to four million, which is quite nice. You've got 40 trains. Lots of trains in there. You're doing a mixture of passengers and mail. I think you're one of the first people I've seen to do passengers. I didn't see Bill doing any passengers. It looks like, yeah, you've got kind of a, you've got a main line coming up from Birmingham to Manchester. Um, again, you've got lots of depots on the line. You haven't used double depots, but, um, oh no, you haven't got lots of depots on your line. You've got depots up here, not seeing any depots down the rest of this line. That is something that is an opportunity for improvement, that. Let's have a look at the robot. Reliability of this train. Well, reliability 78% there on that particular train, so that's not too bad. So overall, it's okay. I mean, you got a, you got one there, but that's going uh, that's going into the Birmingham station. Now I see what you've done with Birmingham station. This is something that I sometimes think about doing, but then never get round to or forget to do. And that's use long tunnels going into stations so that you can then allow the city to grow all the way around it. There's not a massive gain from it, and certainly in late, the later game, you often struggle to take enough passengers out of a station. Uh, here, you've got it as a terminus with these signals. These signals are, are pointless as it is, but if you do continue the line on, you would need them there later. So that's pretty good. Let's have a look now. So that's in the centre. We've got some stuff going up higher up here. Are we near Bridlington? Durham? Hartlepool? Uh, I don't know if this is where... I think... I'm not 100% sure. I think I'm a bit... Scarborough. Oh, there, oh, there's Brill. Oh, so you're a bit further up than that. And you are doing... This is where your passenger service is going through. And you've got a bit of coal stuff going on here as well. So you've moved around the dap... Uh, the dap? <laughs> the map. And you've dabbled in various different parts there. Um, I like how you've uh, not specialised too much. And you've done various different things and then looking around you've got a bit of stuff going on down here now before we go down there uh, I notice that you have got something at Hull Beach so here's your Hull Beach factory uh, 187 crates of goods at the moment so you're actually be uh, beating Bill on that point uh, but your, your platforms for your trains are so much shorter looks like I might have miscounted your train length because I think that train definitely fits, and it's um, let's see here, one, two, three, yeah, it's it's um, it's a five carriage train. Uh, what's that one? That looks like a six carriage train. It is a six carriage train, so I don't think that would fit in the station, which is weird. So yeah, the, your station lengths is definitely something that you need to check out on this one. And it looks like you're bringing stuff into Peterborough North. Yeah, you got so you're allowed to take goods there, and it looks like you've got goods trains on the way. So um, that's doing well as well. And I can see on the map that you're doing stuff down at Exeter. So let's see what you've elected to do. So we have got oh my goodness! So Exeter's looking quite nice here. And I see what else you've done here. So we're up to two and a half thousand in the size of Exeter. You got your buses going around. You got a train station. Taking advantage of having that large town there. And you've also bought some land. I, I think, not sure, but I think you're planning an airport there, which will be interesting to see. But there we go. Thank you for that submission. Uh, let's go and have a look at the next one. And now we're looking at James Anderson's Jay's Logistics. So we have Paddington Station immediately outside of London. London is um, 13,000 in population in your game. You haven't got a lot of money in the bank, but let's see where you've spent it. Because having money in the bank in this early stage of the game is actually potentially a bad thing. It means you're not investing in your network. Let's have a look at your company. Yep, your company is worth over the million mark. You're 1.2 million. You've got 56 trains going on there. Let's have a quick look at some of the trains. So you've got passenger trains going on. Oh, and looks like you've actually used groups. Um, I think you're the first person I've seen that submitted a game 
that's actually used groups. Groups can be very useful, especially if you know the right ways to use them. Let's follow this Paddington line. I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes. I see that you've used the um, similar sort of layout with the, the ins and the outs. This is a relatively good junction, um, as I mentioned previously. However, there's a couple of things wrong with this. And there's actually one that will inhibit you from having this quite good. And I'm, I'm going to point this out because um, people that want to do a junction like this might find it useful. First of all, um, bridges better off having tunnels but that's not the biggest thing the biggest thing is these two signals here and here I can't zoom in any closer but there you go these two signals what's happening is is a train will come down the line and it will get to this path signal and there's a junction directly after the path signal and the path signal will look forward and go what's available well it only looks up until the next junction or signal so this signal is going to go, well, you can go here, it's free and available, or you can go down to the other one, it's free and available. But what it can't do is it can't see what trains are already in the platforms. So if you've already got a train here in platform, what I'm going to call one, I'm going to mark it down here. If you've got a train in this platform and the train coming down the track uh, gets to this signal here, it can't see whether that platform is being used or not because of these two signals here. So the best thing to do when, you've, when you're running this is actually just not to have those two signals. That way, when a train comes down the track, it can see what platforms are available and pick the correct option of the two. It's actually more efficient to allow the trains the longer space and pick the correct line than to have more signals at that point. It's a good junction, but really those two signals are not making it as good as it could be. The other little thing is that you have um, signals coming out the station. These aren't going to hamper you, um, but they are also not needed. It's a terminus station. doesn't make a difference. You could have made your hot junction one shorter. Let's check out the line. It goes quite a long way. And, oh, and look at this. So you've got a main line with a passing station siding. I like this. This is nice. You've got basic junctions here, and you've used standard signals for the, uh, for the most part, and path signals where it matters. That's all fine. Um, and you've got, you know, junctions and so forth. The only thing here is if a train went to Reading and then wanted to go back to Paddington it wouldn't be able to with the way you've done your junctions but I'm guessing that's not how you want this to go um, you've done several along the same route here um, all with these passing um, lines I like these passing lines I think I might implement some in some places oh I didn't know we had a town with zero population that's interesting I like that <laughs> uh, you're going past Bristol and then that is pretty much the end of the line for you just there now have you got involved with Exeter yet? I'm still losing it all. We need Dorchester. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah, this is it. So the Exeter challenge. Yep, you've been growing it. You've grown it up to 4,000 already. You've got your various different bus um, stations in there. They will have satisfied the criteria. And you've already got Exeter Halt in there ready. Looks like it's ready and paused to go. Again, too many signals here. Okay, so get rid of those ones. In fact, these ones you don't need either all these ones um, if you're signaling this up if you're signaling this up the one signal you want to make sure is the one before the split on the entrance and you need two before the merge on the exit oh wrong signal type merge on the exit merge on the exit it's not really useful to have a signal here if this is too sh if this bit here is too short what you've done you've added an extra couple of bits of track here that you don't have to have and that's actually a good thing because then that's giving you a length here for a train to wait in if it has to um, a train could also wait on that bridge so a signal there would do it as well that would be good for up to length five trains if you've got length six trains then um, then this bit of junction here would have to be moved further down the line so, uh, so yes, good use of junctions. This is one of my favourite junctions to do. Um, signal tweaks could make an improvement. Let's have a look at your full uh, at the map a little bit more. So you've got a fantastic line down the bottom there, and you've got oh my goodness, look at this 
monolithic line here. So we've got a large number of iron ore mines, and you've got this station, Grange Over Sands Woods. Now, if that isn't a station name, I don't know what is. You've got a number of trains there. You've even gone over the edge of the... What, what bit of water is this? This... The Irish Sea, I think? The thing is, without island there, and <laughs> it's a bit difficult to to place um, the water. But, um, but yeah, you've got that call coming down here. It looks like, yep, yeah, you're transferring it to a steel mill, turning it into steel and then taking that quite some way where are you taking it ah look right okay so you've got some depots that's good i would have the depots more often you've got a big stretch up here though it depends on the reliability of your vehicles 71 percent not bad probably i would have them a little more often uh you've got a junction down here and this is really good this this what you've done here is really good um one thing that i wouldn't do myself is have signals on the exit here so if I can actually use the keyboard correctly. These signals on the exit, you want to remove them. The reason for that is that if you have a train that comes into the junction, but then it's busy up ahead, and it stops at a signal, it stops here and it waits, and it doesn't block the junction. If you had a signal here still, and it couldn't carry on, it would stop there and block the junction. That does big slowdowns. So what you want to do is just get rid of the leave a space. So if, you, if you're running a um, network with five length trains, then you want to leave five length after your junctions. But you've put your depots before the junctions, and that is a fantastic thing to do. But it looks like you're bringing your steel in. Is it you bring? Are you bringing steel in here? It looks like it. What, what's on this train? It's empty. Oh, are you picking? Oh, you're picking up more steel there. So is it being taken all the way down here? More depots. Oh, clever. You're bringing it over for the whole Beach Factory Challenge. And you're at 250, uh, 225 crates of goods. You've actually got more than anybody else we've looked at today for the whole Beach Factory Challenge. So that's really good. Yep, that's really good. I might have to slightly steal that idea. Do you get it? Steal? Yeah, I, I think on that note we're going to leave it there, folks. So so um, for this episode, we've looked at those three. Thank you, everybody, that has submitted them so far. I'll do another episode looking at some more of your game saves. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please leave all your comments down below. Do you think that I'm not giving enough tips? Do you want to see um, the, the maybe the lines run a little bit? Uh, uh, let me know what you, what, what you want more from these episodes, what you want to see in the episodes, uh, and I'll tweak the series as we go. I hope you're enjoying. If you haven't played along with this series, there is still time to do it. You can still play along. This series is a relatively slow pace. It allows for everybody to catch up, so please feel free to get involved. And that is going to be for all from me and Train 23 for now. Like I said previously, thank you to everybody who submitted them, thank you to the people featured today, and thank you to you for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.